Today, we're going to dive into the historical rise of Hamas, understanding its global impact. I'm going to give you six strategies that you can do as a house of worship here in the US to implement a safety and security program in today's unpredictable landscape. Let's dive in. So we are in a time of global tensions, local threats, the Hamas-US connection, and how do we protect houses of worship? What can we do to protect ourselves? And I think we need to start off learning a bit of the historical context, the rise of Hamas in the Gaza Strip as to how we got where we are today. Now, Hamas was founded in 1987 and it emerged from the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. Initially, its aim was to carry out resistance against Israeli occupation, but over time it's gained significant support due to a combination of its political and militant activities. Now, the events leading up to the recent tensions, the tensions have roots in a series of events from land disputes in East Jerusalem to the Israeli police actions in the Al Qasar Mosque and the situation, as we all know, has escalated rather rapidly to rocket attacks and retaliation strikes, which has deepened the conflict. Now, let's talk for a moment about threats to houses of worship outside the conflict zone. Why should we? as a house of worship in the US, be concerned with what is going on within Israel and the Gaza Strip. Well, the conflict's ripple effect have touched even the distant shores, and house of worship, particularly synagogues, have become targets of hate. Now, the animosity has not been limited to the Middle East. Uh, even here in the US, uh, synagogues in New York and in Chicago have been targeted. So let's tackle the question then, why is this conflict a pressing concern for houses of worship? Now, the heightened global tensions means heightened local threats. Now, while the US might be geographically distant from the Gaza Strip, the global interconnectedness of today's world means that we're not immune from the violence. And the rise in global tensions often leads to more localized threats, particularly against religious establishments. And we saw this around a decade ago with ISIS, where they were calling for more US style attacks. Um, they were moving from East Africa and they were calling for people to get in their vehicles and mount the sidewalks and, and run people over. Very simple, not sophisticated attacks. So the heightened global tensions means heightened local threats. We are seeing a pattern here that we're seeing with other terror groups. Now, the importance of proactive safety measures. Reacting after an incident in today's world is not enough or not sufficient. We need to be proactive. Being proactive is essential to the safety and security at your house of worship. And it's not just about physical security but it's about ensuring that congregations feel safe and secure in these troubled times. Now, with the threat of Hamas-style attacks at houses of worship here in the US, I'm going to give you six things that you can do to reinforce the safety at your house of worship. So number one is about our awareness and visions. The first step in building a strong security culture is about alertness of what is going on around us. So everyone from your clergy, religious leader, to your congregation, they should be vigilant. Encourage members to speak up about anything unusual, no matter how small or insignificant. We know in House of Worship, people often don't want to speak out because they fear they're judging others, and they feel that what they've seen doesn't matter. But we need to create this strong security culture, this awareness and vigilance but we could be the target of a Hamas-style attack here in the US. So please speak up no matter what you see. So a community watch during high-risk times can be invaluable for the safety and security of your program. Now, number two is strengthening your entry points. When I travel to house of worship across the country, one of the weakest parts of our security are our entry points. The reason why? These are the doors that are left unlocked. These are the doors that are propped open. But Physical Security 101 is our first line of defense. Our physical perimeter is our first line of defense. We need to increase the security of our physical barriers, first line of defense, doors and windows. 
we need to make sure any doors that are unlocked get locked, any windows that are open get closed, especially during off hours and at the times when we are a place of mass gathering because physical security 101 is protection of your perimeter. So number two, strengthen the entry points to your church. And number three is about prioritizing communication. Now, many houses of worship already have safety and security teams that have a radio for communication. But what about your volunteers? What about your ushers? What about your greeters? What about your children's ministry? What about your religious leaders on a Sunday? How do they communicate with each other? Because in emergencies, communication is the key to resolving the crisis quickly and making sure that people are notified so they can flee the building, they can hide in place if there's an act of assailant. So a well-informed congregation and staff and volunteers can respond quickly and efficiently. So number three is prioritize your communication. Make sure there is a way for your church members, volunteers, and who else you have within your building, make sure there is a way for them to prioritize and they can communicate with each other. Number four now is about staying informed. Now I'm spending a lot of time reading news articles, studying what is going on in Israel and within the Middle East to work out are there any threats, are there any concerns for houses of worship here in the US? And yes, you can watch my videos and I would do my best to keep you engaged. But I really recommend that you designate key people either already on your safety team or a volunteer or staff member to really study the news, re really read each article, and have a great and deep understanding as to what could be the threat to the US House of Worship based on what we are seeing within Israel and in the Middle East. So this will give you real time awareness which allows you to adjust your safety plan accordingly. So number four, stay informed, have someone, designate someone to follow local news and international news about the troubles within the Middle East. Number five is training and drills. Now, knowledge alone is not enough. Let me say that again. Knowledge alone is not enough. You need to be conducting regular safety and security drills to ensure that not everyone understands your plan, everyone really knows what to do within that emergency. So make sure you are conducting training and drills so that everyone has familiarity with evacuation routes, with safety procedures, to know what is expected of them in a crisis. So knowledge alone is not enough. You need to test and train, test and train. So number five is training and drills. And number six could be the most important out of all the tips that I've given you is the importance of a security focused mindset. Let me say that again. The importance of a security focused mindset. I'm sure many of you are saying, Simon, we have a little or a poor focus around security mindset. But in these troubled times when international threats can come to our waters here in the US, it's not about living in fear. It's not about living in fear, but it's about being prepared. A, a congregation that is educated about potential threats and knows how to respond is a much stronger one. So number six, the importance of a focused mindset. Make sure that your teams, your volunteers, everyone has a safety and security focused mindset at these troubled times. So let's just do a quick recap of those six steps that I give you to a safer and secure church, knowing that there could be the threat of a Hamas style attack at one of our houses of worship here in the US. So number one was awareness and vigilance. We're going to make sure that we're aware and we're vigilant and we understand the threats that could be against us here at houses of worship in the US. Number two, Physical security 101 is protection of your perimeter. We're going to strengthen our entry points. We're going to close down those doors, make sure windows are closed so we have a good understanding as to who's inside our building and we're going to fortify our entry points, but knowing that we're a house of worship and everyone is welcome. Number three is we're going to prioritize communication. Make sure that everyone within your church staff, volunteers, has a way to communicate with each other. Number four is about staying informed. 
You can watch videos like this, but I really encourage you to designate one person from your safety team or someone on your church staff or volunteer to stay updated on all the latest information to see could a threat occur to us at a house of worship here in the US. And number five was conduct training and drills. Knowledge alone is not enough. Knowledge alone is not enough. You need to train and drill, train and drill. And number six, as I said, which I considered perhaps to be one of the most important, is making sure that your congregation have a strong security mindset, a strong security mindset. And before I leave you today, I just want to tell you about these decision decks that we have. We have six different versions of these decision decks, which are designed to test your critical thinking, uh, your decision making. And there are 60 scenarios over six different themes. And a lot of church safety and security teams use them either one on one to say, how would I respond? or they ask them to their church safety and security team. So I will drop a link below if you're interested in buying a set of our decision decks. But before I leave you, uh, that is what I think about the threat to American churches. As always, I love to hear what your views are. Please leave a comment below. I do my best to respond to every comment on the videos that I post. But for now, you stay safe, you have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.